Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And today I wanted to talk with you guys about the differences between treating single individually owned homes, apartments, and townhomes and condos. We had an email come from a viewer who was asking what the difference was or if there is any differences because they lived in an apartment and they were wondering if they should be looking for a different protocol in regards to how a pest control company is going to treat their unit versus somebody who, say, lives in a single individually owned home. And how we're going to do it is that we first want to start with the treatment itself. So in regards to the treatment, when a pest control company comes into your house, whether it's a singly owned home, an apartment, or a condo, the treatment itself in regards to the application of the pesticides, to be honest, really shouldn't differ too much. You know, they're going to come in and treat a bed regardless of where it is relatively the same way. A nightstand, relatively the same way no matter where it is. A couch, the same thing. You may have slight differences in regards to wall voids, because with a wall void, they may be different by apartment, the firewall might be different, but again, you're probably going to dust the wall voids, maybe drill the wall voids, maybe apply some sort of liquid residual on the baseboard. It's relatively going to look the same. So in regards to the actual treatment, no matter what setting it's in, it's going to be relatively similar. Where you're going to get your differences is what you're concerned with outside of the unit that's actually being treated. Now, in a single family home, you really don't have any concerns because we're talking about single family homes that don't have units that are attached to them. And in that situation, you obviously don't have to worry about surrounding units because they don't exist. And so however the bugs got in there, the person living in the house had to bring them in or they had to have a visitor come in that brought the bugs in. And so you don't have to worry about surrounding units. So again, you're going to go in, you're going to treat the singly owned home, and hopefully the bugs go away in a timely fashion. Sometimes your single owned homes do tend to cost more than a typical treatment, only because though the houses can be big. They can be very big. You know, with apartments, a thousand square feet may be a large apartment, as opposed to a house which may be up to 3,000 square feet. And when you have bed bugs in a large house, unfortunately, that's just going to be an expensive treatment because there's a lot of area that you need to treat. Okay, so single, singly owned homes, you're going to go in and do the treatment. You don't have to worry about surrounding units. Apartments. Okay, now you have to start to think about what's around you. You know, you go in to treat an apartment, and what if the bugs came from one of the surrounding units? Because we know that that can happen. And so... The good part about apartments, though, is that typically, and not all, but typically, they're owned by a property management company. And the property management company owns, probably, or controls the entire apartment complex. So when somebody comes in to do your treatment, they should be at least inspecting the surrounding units to make sure that the problem didn't originate from one of those surrounding units. And in regards to doing that, the pest control company is probably just going back to the property management company, getting permission to go into the surrounding units. And remember, from a pest control company's perspective, you always want to get permission before you enter units. If you don't get permission and start entering other people's units, you can create a legal mess for yourselves. So if you have permission, you get into the surrounding units and you do your inspections and you make sure that the original problem didn't originate from one of those surrounding units. And really, there's only one person you're probably going to talk to, and that is the property management company. Once they give you authority to go in, they send the notification out that you're coming out the next day, you go in, you inspect the surrounding units. Now, where you get into your really sticky situations, though, are your condo associations, and we'll get into a second, row houses. So condo associations are a little bit more complicated because in a condominium complex, each person typically owns their individual condo, and the one next to it that may be adjacent and touching is owned by an entirely different person. And if that person doesn't want to let you into their unit to inspect their unit, you may have a problem on your hands because they won't let you in, and they theoretically have legal rights to not let you in. And then what do you do? What if the problem is in their unit and they don't want to take care of the problem? How are you ever going to fix the unit that you're currently in? Now, typically, there's a condo association that has some say in what goes on in the property, and they can possibly help you get into those surrounding units. But either way, it can get tricky in those situations. Where you start to run into your real problems are in, as I said, row houses. When you get into cities, a lot of times you have townhouses or condominiums, similar type complex, but they're along an entire city street. Each one is either owned by somebody different or what even gets more complicated is that a lot of times there's property management companies that own in each individual home and rent them out to somebody. 
So when you come to the surrounding units, they're actually being rented out by a property management company that may be in a different city, maybe not want to listen to anything that you have to say, it could be completely uninterested in what you're telling them about bed bugs. I mean, to be honest with you, we've run into ones that you know, are quote unquote slumlords and they just don't care about their unit. They just rent it out to whoever and they don't want to spend a dime letting somebody in to inspect for bed bugs. And what do you do in that situation? You know, when you're going into somebody who cares and wants to get rid of the bed bugs, but they're originating from one of the surrounding units and you can't get into that surrounding unit because either the homeowner or the property management company won't let you in. And it's a problem. And in situations like that, a lot of pest control companies won't offer guarantees because I can't guarantee I'm going to get rid of your problem if it's coming from one of the surrounding units. So to review real quick, the treatment itself, no matter where you are, is going to typically look rel at least relatively the same. You're going to go in and treat a bed because a bed is a bed and you're going to do what you need to do. Nightstands, you're going to treat them relatively the same. You know, couches, relatively the same, whether they're in apartments, singly owned homes, whatever the case may be. What you have to start to think about are the surrounding units and how you can possibly address those surrounding units to make sure the problem isn't originating from them. And depending on what situation you're in is going to depend on how you're going to approach that. Just remember that before you enter any surrounding units in those settings, you always have to get permission from whoever owns those units. Because if you start entering units and you don't have permission, that again is a very sticky legal situation. You can find yourself in a world of trouble. So. Alrighty everybody, so that's basically the overview of treatments in different types of scenarios. If you have any questions about this or any other episode on Bedbug TV, please email me at jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com and uh, I hope to see everybody soon enough.